Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and it's been a pleasure to work with you as well. I want to thank all our, our witnesses for being here with us today. Um, and, and I want to thank the Chairman for holding today's hearing on the farm economy. Um, it's critical that we continue to identify the challenges that are facing farmers and ranchers today, especially as the committee begins to consider the next farm bill. Um, I'm honored to represent a district very rich in agriculture. The farmers I meet are proud of what they do, and they should be. Um, when I first came to Congress and in the time leading up to the 2014 Farm Bill, I often heard a familiar refrain from farmers in my district. They said they need two things get a farm bill done and pass comprehensive immigration reform. Um, passing the 2014 farm bill itself was a huge accomplishment, and, but it was also, in my view, one of the best farm bills we've ever had for specialty crop growers, which make up a sizable percentage of the producers in my district. The investments made in programs like the Specialty Crop Research Initiative, Specialty Crop Block Grants, and the Organic Research and Extension Initiative were unprecedented, and they have a huge impact in the real world. This is a prime example of how Congress should be investing in programs that give us a great return on our investment while saving money in the long run. Recently, Chairman Davis and I led a bipartisan letter in support of the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Unfortunately, Congress hasn't appropriated funding at the levels authorized in the Farm Bill. And in the last four years, the Agriculture and Food Research Initiative review a review process identified $3.85 billion in grants worthy of funding. However, due to budgetary constraints, the program awarded only a quarter of the projects that were deemed worthy. This research is a critical unmet need that vastly assists producers with pests, emerging diseases, and food safety, and ultimately lowers the cost of production. Um, which brings me to the second thing that farmers I represent said they needed most, comprehensive immigration reform. Our immigration system is broken and in badly in need of repair. Last Congress, I was one of the lead sponsors of a bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform bill, similar to the one that passed in the Senate. And I believe this bill, if it had passed, um, or would have passed if it were just allowed a vote. And while the President's executive actions could provide relief to some, it does nothing to solve the problem of an unworkable H-2A program. For too long, Congress has failed to take meaningful action to address our broken immigration system. And as a result, we have a deeply flawed system that is not working for our farmers, for businesses, for immigrants, or for families. I see it all across our state, and particularly in my district. Farmers can't get the seasonal agricultural workers they need to support one of our state's largest industries. Students face uncertain futures in the only country they've ever really known. Technology businesses still don't have access they need to the global talent pool that could help create the next major innovation, and families are being torn apart. So despite these setbacks, I remain committed to passing comprehensive immigration reform, and I'll keep working with my colleagues on the Agriculture and the House Judiciary Committees to get this done. Passing enforcement-only mechanisms like border security only or E-Verify only would do nothing to solve the problem and may make things even worse. That being said, producers face a wide variety of challenges today, especially in the current agriculture economy. Today's panel of witnesses spans a variety of perspectives, including um, Northwest Horticulture from Washington State. So I look forward to hearing all of your testimony. Um, thank you again for being here today, and I yield back. I'd like to.